Respected elder brothers and sisters and rest of brothers and sisters. I always use this word brother sisters. I really believe seven billion human beings on this planet are actually part of human community. Same way we born, same way we die, while we alive. Most precious thing is warm heartedness. That brings inner strength, inner peace, and also create peaceful community. So I actually try to educate people or share with people as much as possible to know the ultimate source of happiness is within ourselves, not on money or fame. So therefore, uh, uh, here I always as I believe and also share with other people, we need a sense of oneness of seven billion human beings. Uh, different faith, different nationality, different color, and rich and poor is secondary. Basically, we are the same human being. Now, Uh, these days, I have sort of four commitment. Number one commitment as a human being, promote basic human value on the basis of scientific finding. Now, number of scientists, they found uh, constant anger, hatred, actually eating our immune system. And basic human nature, since we are social animal, so basic nature is more compassionate. So that's the uh, basis of our hope. Now the, what is we are lacking is existing education system. I usually call modern education. is introduced from West. So the Western people, Judo Christian countries, they are, as far as spiritual field is concerned, only pray, 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 pray to God. Now, that's inadequate, because inadequate. Now, warm heartedness, oh, in order to uh, keep warm heartedness, and in order to increase warm heartedness, we must utilize human brain, not just faith. As I mentioned earlier, now scientists, number of scientists, you see, mentioned that. So we are not talking about next life or heaven or or uh, the karma, tarwa. 
Oh, like that, nirvana. Simply, dead raise life. We everybody want happy life. So ultimate source of happiness is within ourselves. More compassionate mind, then that person automatically, you see, reduce anger, uh, suspicion, uh, frustration. These things automatically reduce. So therefore, now in education, we should include education about our mind. Uh, and now this is this country not new. Over three thousand years, concept of ahimsa, concept of karuna already developed. Now I think this country, uh, during British rule, they also introduce the modern education. Wonderful. Uh, however, they do not know. Only prayer. Otherwise, you see, training of mind, they do not know. So now, India's existing education should combine with thousand-year-old India's education how to tackle our emotion. Uh, so India is the only nation who can combine uh, education about materialistic-oriented education and including science, Technology, very important, very good. Uh, at the same time, ancient in India's education about ahimsa, karuna, uh, through training of mind and full of knowledge tackle our destructive emotion. That is India's tradition. Now that must combine with modern education and these ancient so the Indian knowledge. So now, now uh, my th 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 third or second responsibility is the promotion of religious harmony, uh, and third regarding Tibet, and fourth now I am trying to revival of this ancient Indian knowledge in modern India, combine uh, modern education which oriented materialistic sort of uh, thing. And then ancient Indian knowledge about mind, these should combine. And India, a thousand years, you have the tradition of secular. Wonderful. Whether you see believer or non-believer, I believe in this religion, that religion, that's personal matter. As a human being, we need education, knowledge, uh, about our mind. Then this country, these things are not something like bring something new. No. India's own tradition, only question is revival. So that's my uh, sort of uh, fourth, fourth kasa, commitment. Uh, commitment. Mm. Now here, real change in the world will only come from a change of heart. So now here, according to materialistic sort of education, knowledge, when we mentioned mind or chit, only sensory level, not chit or mental level, So materialistic life, a materialistic culture through materialistic education, whole uh, sort of people who come through that kind of education, is, uh, they are sort of the concept of happiness, joyfulness, only related with five senses of organs, seeing something nice, hearing some beautiful music, and taste, and smell, and touch, including sex. These are sensory level, not mental, sixth mind, mental level. So anger, compassion, these 
or should be on the on the level of sixth mind. So we need a uh, special training, or yes, special training about mental level. How to keep peace of mind? Pray or recite something not sufficient. We must utilize human brain and through human intelligence. Through that way, we have fuller knowledge. Such such emotion are very destructive. Uh, it is antidote within our own mind. So realize that and. Pay more attention to strengthening these uh, positive emotion. Then automatically, destructive emotion reduce. So, only question of healthy mind, and through that way, healthy body. So now, in that respect, uh, in India. Uh, over a thousand year, years, you see, really uh, paying more attention about mind. So practice of shamatha, single pointed mind, and also uh, the analytical meditation, vipassana, uh, over three thousand years in this country. So single pointed mind. Sort of bring our mental energy more generalized, and uh, the main mind increase the ability to put to put, 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 put focus. to focus one. Then your main mind focusing that uh, more seriously. Then senses of organs become more. Neutralize, sure. Uh-huh. And then uh, the very purpose of shine or, or shamata is sharpening or ability of mind. Wherever you want to concentrate, you see the meditation also very helpful to kasoda. Anyway, to stability. Then analytical meditation, analyze, vipassana. Vipassana really, you see, uh, change our sort of uh, our mind, our belief, or our attitude. So, in Buddha Dharma, of course, the the Sangha philosophy also is tremendously. Sort of practice these things, and the Jains, Jains, right? Also, you see very much sort of uh, you do practice these things. So Jainism, Ahimsa, wonderful. Then after that, Buddha come, and also you see, uh, actually all major religious tradition carry the same message: message of love, or uh, message of tolerance. Uh, message of self-discipline. The differences now theistic religion believe God, Creator. Non-theistic religion, like uh, Sangha, one part of Sangha philosophy, no Creator. Jainism, no Creator. Buddhism, no Creator, but rather self-creation. So the emphasis how to train our mind. How to tackle our destructive emotion? So in Buddhism, the uh, after Buddha, the many scholars, many eventually some different tradition school of thought, and then gradually Nalanda institution develop. So I usually do not use do not use the word. Mayana and Hinayana. It creates something wrong impression. The Theravada is the foundation of Buddha Dharma. Usually we call Hinayana. Then Sanskrit tradition, Mayana. 
No. The Sanskrit tradition is entirely based on Pali tradition. Without a Pali tradition, you see, we can't uh, carry Sanskrit tradition as a Buddhist sort of practice. So, Pali tradition, very important. But Pali tradition mainly is based on Buddha's quotation. And then Nalanda tradition, you see, use analytical meditation, analyze, analyze. Buddha himself, you see, told us, uh, oh, my follower, monks, scholars, should not accept my teaching out of faith, out of devotion, but rather thorough investigation and experiment. So Nalanda tradition exactly follow that advice. So, many Nalanda master analyze some Buddha's own teaching. After they analyze uh, through reasoning, they found some contradiction. So, they reject even Buddha's own word. That's Nalanda tradition, like Nagarjuna uh, and Aryadeva, um, Buddha Palita, these people make distinction. This Buddha's teaching we can accept literally. This Buddha's teaching we cannot accept uh, because uh, re so investigate through reason we find contradiction. So Buddha taught that particular audience according to their mental disposition, Buddha taught that we cannot accept that. So that's quite unique, the Nalanda master. So I usually say, say, say Pali tradition and the Sanskrit tradition, uh, not use Hinayana, Mahayana, and also I think a Nalanda tradition, meaning Sanskrit tradition, but sometimes I feel not necessary to use the Nalanda word. Nalanda, then people get the impression something Connection, some the connection with Buddhism. So simply, Sanskrit tradition. Many ancient non-Buddhist scholars they also wrote in Sanskrit uh, language. So at that time, Sanskrit language consider uh, more educated people sort of scholar. scholarly sort of language. language. So like Nagarjuna. Nagarjuna and his uh, Nalanda master, they use Sanskrit text, Sanskrit word. So it is quite clear. Pali tradition, Sanskrit tradition, Sanskrit tradition, not necessarily just Buddhism, but all ancient Indian sort of uh, scholars use Nalanda, the Sanskrit language. So now, the, as I mentioned earlier, the difference is Bali mainly quotation, based on quotation. Sanskrit tradition, analyze. So now today, when we discuss with scientists, uh, according Sanskrit tradition, it's very easy to learn uh, each other. And the number of scientists really sort of said, also, the Kasoda, use, they find useful about this knowledge in Sanskrit tradition. I think mainly psychology, about mind. Sometimes I sort of use, uh, uh, express this way, the modern psychology, uh, compare ancient Indian psychology, modern psychology looks like kindergarten level the Asian Indian sort of psychology, highly developed. So now, in order to develop peaceful mind, uh, this knowledge which exists in Sanskrit tradition, very, very useful. Then, then the logical approach as a sort of student 
of Sanskrit tradition. In our mind, whenever we uh, come across something, we never say, yes, yes. We always, why, why? That's very important. So the risk, why? Then investigate reason. Oh, yes, yes, sir. <laughs> then you see, our intelligence no longer sort of because of the room, room, why, why, why? Then plenty of room, investigate. So therefore, according to my own sort of little experience, meeting with uh, modern scientists, uh, mainly in psychology and physics, and particularly quantum physics, we are very similar. Once the Raja Ramana, late Raja Ramana, as he told me, quantum physics invest something new in this country 2,500 years ago, already developed quantum physics. It is very true. So, uh, it is quite useful in order to tackle emotion. Our emotion, destructive emotion, very much based on appearances and some kind of grasping or just something absolute true. Then attachment and anger, this come. So once we realize oh, there is differences, appearance and reality, and that strong grasping, grasping, that automatically weak, become weak. Now some quantum physicist, quantum physics student, already you see getting that kind of experience. That's exactly Nagarjuna mentioned. And many Buddha's quotation mentioned, uh, yes. So our uh, grasping at uh, things as if they have some absolute existence um, it happens because of our, uh, what is known as um, called improv inappropriate uh, mentation. So, uh, here I want to uh, share with you one of my secret you see, that is uh, when I met scientists and when they explained about quantum physics, then I really sort of listen humbly. But in my mind, I feel I know better. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you see, we uh, in Tibetan tradition, uh, according the instruction of uh, Shanta Rakshita from Nalanda. We extensively, you see, study this sort of knowledge. So, the uh, Vibhashik, not much talk. And Sotantik, also not much, but little. Uh, then Chitta Mantra and Madhimika extensively, you see, explain about differences, appearance, and reality. So we study several years and also meditate. Therefore, uh, actually we know better like that. So therefore, these is a concept very useful. And then, uh, I mean, psychology and the quantum physics, uh, then Kasa. To some neurobiology. Oh, neurobiology. And particularly uh, in, tant in tantric sort of study, explanation about our inner energy, how to control these things. So we have sort of plenty of sort of material to discuss with the modern scientists. And they uh, also appreciate to learn from Buddhist psychology or these Buddhist philosophy, these things. So we both, the, our principle is why, why, why? So investigate. Therefore, now some Chinese uh, scholars, 
they found Tibetan Buddhism is true Nalanda tradition, and that tradition is a very scientific religion. Some Chinese scholar they express that, so it is true. Uh, so the Sanskrit tradition, I think, really is immense help to bring ability about our mind to investigate, investigate. So therefore, now these are Indian tradition. So modern India, now I notice there's more and more people really showing interest about ancient Indian knowledge. So now this university also now really have some program and have close contact with some Tibetan scholar. So, uh, and many other places in the Chandigarh University, I met, I, I saw talk, and then different places, more and more Indian, now really showing interest about ancient Indian knowledge. So this is not something like bring from outside, no. India's own tradition. So only question is revival and combine modern education and ancient Indian knowledge, like that. So then, uh, when we talk about ancient Indian knowledge, I often, you see, uh, sort of teasing my Indian friend, this physical, not Indian, Tibetan, but my mind, more Indian than those modern educated Indian. <laughs> they do not know these things. <laughs> so this is nothing special for me. But thousands, you see, uh, I think scholar, mainly a monk. Nowadays, nuns also become, now coming, come to coming, more and more scholars. And, and also because of Bhikshuni. So, in any way, in the Karnataka state, I think at least over a thousand monk students who really study these things, uh, at least in order to become a scholar, at least 20 years study. And in, in the past, in Tibet, 20, 30 years study. The root text learned by heart. Myself also, about I think six, seven years old, I already start memorize these root text. Then explanation each word according commentary, mainly Indian master. And then of course later Tibetan masters. I took over ten thousand volumes wrote by a uh, Tibetan master. And then we extensively use debate, logical approach. It's very, very useful, sharpening our mind and quite sort of, because the person who study logic, then their mind always something, because of the sharp, very useful. So some Japanese, a Chinese tradition, these Buddhist meditation, they consider meditation is more important. Of course, no question, meditation is important, but equally important is study. So some Japanese monastery, uh, sometimes I suggested, your monastery should, should become learning center, more discussion, not just a meditation. So now more and more Buddhist countries, particularly follow our Nalan tradition, now they begin uh, to feel study is something important. One of my close, uh, very respected uh, abbot, abbot Sumare, abbot, uh, one Japanese monk, abbot, wonderful. Uh, since we become very close friend, so he once told me, 
every Japanese recite the, the Paramita Sutra, Shirunimu, Heart Sutra. Uh, then he say, without knowing the meaning. <laughs> uh, so uh, he appreciated my explanation, uh, very useful. So he expressed to me like that. The, these sort of important sort of text, just something like ritual, not study. Study is very important. Now in, Tib in Tibet, I think, uh, as I mentioned earlier, firstly Shantarakshita, and then Kamala Shila. They really, you see, uh, put emphasis, study is important. So during Kamala Shila, you see, he uh, carried debate with Chinese meditationer and Kamala Shila, and witnessed by Tibetan king, Tsung Tse. So through debate, and then Kamala Shila, of course, naturally more sort of scholar, so he can uh, re he can lot, I mean he can reasoning. So then some of those Chinese meditationer who oppose study, expert from Tibet, like that. So they we I think today's world, today's Buddhist world, we Tibetan, only Tibetan kept this Nalanda tradition through serious sort of study and use logical approach. So now, fortunately, in South India, our traditional major uh, monastic institution established in the Karnataka state, quite c close here. So you can exploit these Tibetan scholars' knowledge. Very good. Hmm? So recently I uh, visited, I invited Kasa, Kasa, Orangabad. A number of Buddhists there. Uh, but then, you see, they are so far only sort of follow uh, Theravada tradition. Of course, wonderful, but not much use reasoning. So there are also, I briefly mentioned about Nalanda tradition, Sanskrit tradition, use human intelligence, maximum way. That's important. Now here, and this knowledge, the original source from Buddhist text, but you should use this as an academic subject, not Buddhist subject. And sometimes not necessarily use Nalanda tradition, but simply use Sanskrit tradition. So one time, Kasati Chagupu Timare Kasa. Kasa Pegiri Kasa. Nagarjuna Konda. Mare did such a big design. Amravati. Ka. Amravati. 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 Is it they uh, already built one Buddha statue or something? And then lower part is in they want to become sort of study room for study. I told, then I expressed my appreciation, then I told them, Pali tradition, Thailand, Burma, Sri Lanka, Cambodia, Laos, they preserve perfectly, wonderful. Now Sanskrit, traditionally China. Now China become communist country. With Tibet, now uh, our freedom lost. The handful Tibetan now uh, keep using this tradition. And Mongolia also now, uh, recent or said the decades, a lot of damage. Over 100,000 monks killed. Very difficult. But now with new freedom, the Mongolian also making some effort. I always telling them, study is very important. Some recitation, some holy text and ritual important, but study, recite these things with full knowledge, then good, 
without the knowledge or the meaning, just recite is not much important. Now in in, in reality, I think a Tibetan handful of Tibetan uh, scholars, students, now in Karnataka State, these are the main sources of the Sanskrit tradition. So you can, you already have some connection. So you should exploit our knowledge as much as you can. Okay. This is not a question of sort of change religious faith. This is just an academic subject. So faith, individual matter. These are, uh, or the academic subject, something useful for humanity. My hope, India uh, revive ancient Indian knowledge, then through education, uh, some fuller knowledge about the importance of warm-heartedness with intelligence. Now this India eventually can offer whole world through education uh, in order to become more peaceful, more compassionate human being through education, not through prayer. I think India can show the rest of the world. So there is a real potential. Now this is beginning of the 21st century. So if we start some a systematic sort of program, then I think later part of the 21st century, I think India can make a significant contribution for world peace through inner peace. Okay. So then, the Khasa, uh, Raja Marotra, the Khasa, so what do you mean Khasa? Universal responsibility. Uh, when I received, you see, the Nobel laureate, uh, when the announce come, the number of people come to see me and ask me what what I feel, and I just wrote, as a monk, you see, I'm because of the no more, no less, as just a monk. So, uh, and then I express some kind of my appreciation to recognize some of my small contribution regarding peace, like that, that I express. Then when I reach Delhi, one of my Indian friend, first question is, what are you going to use those money? <laughs> The first question, my Indian friend, as soon as I reached Delhi, I already made up. Uh, at that time, you see, the, I just have plain memory about Baba Amde's place. A wonderful, handicapped people. Oh, he organized and give them self confidence and some because of lepers, liberty. Oh, the, a few hands like that, but full of confidence because the organization look after them. Oh, not look, you see, these people, oh, not like that. Equally treated them. So I very much impressed Baba Amde. So half of that uh, money, you see, I donated to Baba Amde's casa. Society like that. Then half money, uh, I set up this organization, and he, long time my friend, so he look after this money. But sometimes I criticize, don't be sleepy way. <laughs> Should be more active. Uh, so now this time, is you, because uh, of the uh, full cooperation with this and he can spend some money. Very good. <laughs> so like that. Mm. So that's all. Thank you. Now I'm looking forward. You see, uh, 
through education, your university uh, with cooperation some Tibetan scholar, I think you can certainly make significant contribution regarding promotion of ancient Indian knowledge. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Your Holiness, for enlightening us, even humorously at times, on the importance of studies. We shall cherish your words in our hearts and minds and fulfill them in our attitudes and lives. An important component of today's session that His Holiness has looked forward to is the interaction with students. The students who indicated their interest are requested to please follow the instructions of the Urshas. Some questions, Your Way? Yes, some questions. Any questions? Merhom. Good morning. My name is Michaela Chetty from the Department of Zoology. Oh, yes. I think two mail form, one mail form, keep here, one mail form, keep here. Then those questions uh, come online. Okay, yes. Mail form, what they do? Yes, 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 okay. Good morning. My name is Michaela Chetty from Department of Zoology. My question is, how do you maintain optimism, positivity, and faith when there is so much negativity in the world around us and disbelief in humanity. Hmm? I think basically, uh, look, European people, an early part of, uh, early part 20th century, in the European continent, First World War, Second World War, uh, according to some scholar, about 200 million uh, of people killed through violence. But then, the, after Second World War, people realize now our common interest is more important. So, the France leader, uh, French leader, de Gaulle, and German leader, Adena, during wartime, arch enemy, but they realize uh, killing each other, no use. So we should develop a European Union. They started. I have full confidence if European Union not develop, then last a few decades, I think some killing must take place. But because the European Union started or materialized, no longer killing among those member states. So this is one indication of a human being through suffering, through education. You see, human beings thinking more wider, more realistic. So therefore, I think a human being, uh, uh, through suffering, through difficulties, we gain more deeper experience. Uh, so now, this is uh, the Kasore, Kasota, continuation of 20th century. I have more optimism. Now, in this respect, India, China, most of two populated nation. So close relation, uh, Sino-Indian relation, very important. Traditionally, China is a Buddhist country. 1954-55, I visited China, and many places I visited, number of Buddhist temples there. Uh, 
Uh, and then, of course, the totalitarian system, the communist, like Kaza Revolution, they deliberately try to destroy, but fail. It is clear. Thousand year old human sort of was the spiritual tradition, very difficult to eliminate by force. So now, after Kaza Revolution, now China, the ancient Chinese tradition, and including Buddhism, the revival was very quickly. Now today, China, communist country, I I think most the over three hundred millions Buddhist. Few years ago, Chinese Peking University, one Peking University, carry survey how many Buddhist in China. Then, they in their report they mentioned over three hundred millions, and many of these Chinese Buddhist are more educated people. So now, since then, Buddhist population increasing. So now, uh, I think almost every week some Chinese Buddhist came to see me, and since last few years, I also arrange. Special sort of arrangement, teaching Chinese Buddhist from come from men in China. So things are changing. Now, I think Tibetan tradition, Sanskrit tradition, Nalan tradition, Chinese Buddhist tradition also same. Tangsen, he spent some time at Nalanda, and he met one Nagarjuna's disciple, uh, Kasa. Ah, I think Nagabodhi. Uh, some historians say he met Nagabodhi, uh, and at that time Nagabodhi very old. So Tibetan tradition, uh, Sanskrit Nalan tradition, Tibetan Chinese tradition also uh, Nalan tradition. So now uh, China, the. Obviously, totalitarian system is something new. Uh, it not fit. Now look, Hong Kong also you see uh, like that. So more and more Chinese now follow Buddhism, and then India, land of Buddha, as uh, Prime Minister Modi mentioned at the UN, India is land of Buddha. So culturally, spiritually, naturally, very close, and then now economically, you see uh, the good relation India and China economically also is very important. So therefore, uh, the good relation, Sino-Indian relation, uh, something like uh, Hindi Chini bye bye. Isn't it? Oh, is it that I think serious Hindi bye bye? I think can revive like that. So then, India, I think one point uh, one one billion, isn't it? China one point about three billion. So over two billion, two and a half billion. Big population. Traditionally. Very close with Buddhist, Buddhist teaching and Sanskrit tradition. So I look using these sort of aspect, quite hopeful. The totalitarian system. I think uh, uh, cannot remain long future. Change. This thousand-year-old spiritual tradition remain. Another few centuries. Okay. Next question. Yes.
Now, as a practitioner of Bodhicitta altruism, according to Shantadeva's teaching, oh, I realize the ultimate source of unhappiness is anger. So the whole oh, sentient being, we usually call mother sentient being, so training these things, then almost, you see, entire phenomena appears very positive. Even sometimes I critically view some of these deities, very wrathful deities, sometimes I feel love. And according to my own sort of also teaching, some sort of uh, initiation, Abhishekha, the, at the beginning, Gektor, you know, uh, expel evil forces. Now, last few years, I no longer practice that. Nothing to expel. We all are our mother centered being. So, this practice, very, very helpful. Very helpful. Because, target training, job at Tamsi, Jang and Draw, Tishi, Yitani. Part of the talent of the person you had a family as a coward is Shushua Shukra. And so, this um, verse from Shanti Deva's Bodhisattva Charya Avatara is a very powerful um, verse which says, uh, Today, in the um, you know, before the site of the all the, the Tagadas or the yes, yes. Tagadas, um, I call upon all um, everyone to the feast of Buddhahood and in the meantime also uh, temporary uh, blissful uh, and happiness, I mean, uh, happiness in the uh, world itself. And therefore, all the gods and demigods and the rest be happy and joyful. So, I use my brain maximum way how to bring inner peace. Anger is the most powerful destroyer of inner peace. And self-centered, selfish, that also one sort of source. So, the altruism is the opposition of self-centered, selfish, that it does. Then unique Buddhist theory, nothing exist as appears, as I already mentioned, quite similar, quantum physics. So that reduce, so absolute, so that reduces your strong grasping at things as if they have absolute existence. So, the Jashadat de Musum, number tall in John Sung's, do the Medu Chijilo, Tempelan in John Jurus, so I saw it. And uh, Master Nakajuna's Mulla Madhyama Kakarika says, um, you know, our attachment, anger, and confusion arises um, um, because of this. Number um, uh, 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 Some kind of a mental construct. And uh, then. Number uh, 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 mental construct here refers to, you know, um, um, I call, uh, misapprehension or misconception of the reality. So the practice of bodhicitta and the practice of uh, understanding about shunyata, this is my main practice. Now over almost 60 years. So very, very helpful uh, to weaken all these destructive emotions, including anger, like that. And of course, uh, since childhood, my mother, very, very compassionate. So we, uh, children of our mother, we never saw mother angry face. Always sort of compassionate. So I usually describe uh, my mother was the first teacher of compassion for me. All like that. So now here, many ladies, 
and also sort of as a males. You should teach your children from childhood uh, anger, hatred, these are very bad for their own health and very bad for study. So compassionate mind, loving kindness is very useful in order to carry human intelligence more normal way. Too much anger, human intelligence cannot function normally. Okay. Next question. We are taking questions from students who have already indicated their interest. Please respect the order that students are following. Good morning. Uh, my name is Varad Narvekar. I am from Goa Engineering College, Electronics and Telecommunication Department. Your Holiness, uh, my question is, how would be modern India and the world be different if the Nalanda University was still standing and it was not taken down? How would have been uh, like India would have been benefited from it? Karsa. You mean that building? Oh. Uh, during the destruction... No, uh, the knowledge is here, not outside. Oh. When I visit Nalanda ruined uh, area, some pigeons flying from here, yeah. But this doesn't matter. Uh, their knowledge over a thousand years we kept in, at least in Tibetan Sarvasthi. Uh, Tibetan monastic institution kept using this knowledge. So on this planet, Nalendra knowledge still very much alive. Now more and more, as I mentioned earlier, non-Buddhists also now showing interest, and including many scientists. Then, okay, Karsa Indra, this is your main question. Yes, sir. Hmm? These Buddhist teaching uh, not depend on big house, big temple, but study, study. And this text, we have over 300 volumes, all translated from Sanskrit and Bali, and some, I think, Nepalese. So altogether, Buddha's own word about 100 volume, and then commentary, like Nagarjuna's commentary, uh, altogether 200 volumes. So these uh, we study. So that is important. Temple, not important. Usually we call temple here. Inner temple is more important than external temple. Okay. Thanks a lot, sir. Hmm? Thanks a lot. Thank you. Yeah. Good morning. My name is Manisha Narvikar. I'm from Dampe College of Arts and Science, Miramar. My question to you is, what do you have to say to people? Who louder, can... louder. My question to you is, what do you have to say to people who take religion to promote violence or killing? We see so many of them. Kasha. Now there's uh, religious harmony. One of my commitment, uh, my number one commitment, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, number two, my commitment is 
promotion of religious harmony. India is an example. Yes. This country, uh, India's homegrown different religion, Sankhyaism, Jainism, Buddhism, and within these uh, sub subdivisions. Now, for example, in Buddhism, as I mentioned earlier, we have a Sheikh, Sutantik, uh, Mantra, and Matimika, like that. Then, from outside, Christian, Islam, Judaism, and then Zorazuddin in Bombay, about less than 100,000 population, very peaceful, no fear. In Bombay, big city, you see, I think millions of Christians, millions of Hindus uh, and Muslims, the handful uh, Zorazuddin, Parsi, no fear. So, India, besides homegrown different religion, but from outside different religion, uh, reach here and establish their own sort of city community, very peaceful. In this country, I never heard complaint between Sunni and Shia. And next neighbor, Afghanistan, problem. And Syria, in this area, problem. Because of Sunni and Shia killing each other. Unfortunately, in Burma, Buddhist, Muslim, some so I say, bully. So this, I think, India's tradition, India, thousand years, of several religion together. That's one advantage. So child, from childhood, Indian mind, yeah, there are many religious traditions. So the concept of several religion, several truth there. Those isolated country, some Muslim country, you see, only one truth, one religion. Then problem started. So in individual case, concept of one truth, one religion, good, in order to keep your faith more sort of, because of the single pointed. Very good. But in terms of society, that impossible. So in the, in the terms of society, several truth, several religion, it's reality. We must accept that. So now in this country, Indian Muslim from childhood, they already know there are different religious tradition. Then those country, only Muslim religion, Islam. And then you see, their mind, a little bit sort of a lack of sort of contact with, with other religious people. So then problem. So since Indian Muslim, uh, Shia and Sunni, one example in Ladakh, Sunni and Shia problem, I never heard. And India also, you see, I never heard. So Indian Muslim should take some sort of kasoda effort to bring together. So according to my suggestion, some Indian Muslim, they organize uh, in Delhi, uh, I think, uh, national level, uh, national level uh, June. June. Oh, in Delhi, national level, uh, the Indian Muslim organize one national level uh, leaders uh, or practitioner of Muslim together, I think one or two days. Since I suggested, and also I made some donation, so they invite me, uh, I also participate. At that time, uh, fortunately, some Iranian Muslim teachers there, they also participate. So India uh, should take more active sort of role for promotion of religious harmony to show those country 
where uh, with a different religious tradition and some conflict. It is very unfortunate, unthinkable. All these different religious traditions, in spite different philosophy, but all carry the same message, message of love. One of my friend, one Muslim in Ladakh, Ladakh Turduk. So he expressed at public uh, as a Muslim, you see, we love Allah. So similarly, we must extend our love towards the entire creation. Creature, creation, creation, creature, creature, a creature of Allah. Wonderful. So all religion, different philosophy. Some say there is God. Some say no God. Uh, but they all just carry the same message: message of love, forgiveness. So no problem. So therefore, when we saw, you see, in the name of religion, killing. Unthinkable. So we need effort, tirelessly, promotion of religious harmony. Okay. Thank you so much. Good morning, Your Holiness. Uh, this is Ms. Aditi Naik from Department of Botany, Goa University. Uh, my question is, our current education uh, system is primarily focused on the development of the mind rather than the development of the heart and training of the emotions. And mind and the heart are the crucial tools which helps to bring about a positive change in the society. In this regards, what would be your recommendations in incorporating spirituality, well-being, compassion in the Indian system of education right from the childhood or the studenthood starting from schools, colleges and universities without the involvement of any religious practices or religious leaders. Thank you. So that's my, <laughs> firstly, this country, the concept of Ahimsa, Karuna, this part of Indian tradition. Now this not put in, not remain in a uh, temple uh, and some ritual, not that way. In secular education field, we must include education about so our, our karuna, practice of karuna, ahimsa, this uh, nothing to do with God or religion or Shivaji. Simply, how to, uh, how to create happy child, happy humanity, happy family. Not talking about the next life. Hmm? Thank you. We'll take the last question. So, Padelek, uh, good morning to your holiness. My name is Sumit Singh. Uh, I am from uh, Department of French and Francophone Study, Goa University. My question is, life is full of problem and failure. Because of, we, uh, because of that, we face a frustration. How we get out from frustration? Kasa. I think uh, humanity, because of this brain, uh, more or less uh, human intelligence, very much combined with self-centered attitude. So therefore, uh, I think we, uh, I think like other animals, like tiger, the eating 
the other animal for their survival. Once I visited Kasadimini Zoo, Zoo Karate, Hyderabad. Same place, not big sort of area, but same place, one side some tiger, one quite close, some deers there. I asked the uh, people who look after that sort of varsity, or who manages that uh, museum, any danger? And they say no danger. The tiger has a fat rare, give sufficient food. Then no danger to uh, attack. Uh, so tiger, no religion, uh, no rule of law. But they, by nature, they storm are full. Then peace. We human being, <laughs> you see, always you see, create the the concept of we and the day, and then fight, and then within the same community at the global level, also you see, gap, rich and poor. The within country, rich and poor. In this country, uh, also the caste system. Very bad. This, I think, feudal system use or create question of caste system, lower caste. We should exploit. The upper class have some right. That's absolute, absolutely wrong. So India's caste system is outdated and related with the feudal system. Now India most of populated democratic country, uh, these kind of sort of old system must change. So, so then exploitation. So I think very serious. Uh, so then rule of law uh, and corruption. Very sad. Very sad. Now we have to work this uh, the corruption, I think, make clear, make public. That's important. One time in Delhi, uh, some, uh, some, some people you see, mentioned about these corruptions. Then I told them, uh, sometimes it is necessary demonstration. If you organize some demonstration, I will join. So that's important. Although this is rule of law, but some corruption or some sort of people who have power, they sometimes use it difficult. So people's voice through demonstration, such things, I think sometimes relevant, necessary, like that. Okay. Thank you, Tukjeche, sir.